we doing, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Richie Hicks Jr. Sports Podcast. I am your host, Richie, here with my guy, Mr. Idris Salam, a.k.a. Bosco from the Bronx. Yo, what's up? Good morning, bro. Uh, man, it feels good to do a morning show. We haven't done one of these in a minute a because lot. of our crazy work schedules. Since the uh, football season, actually. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, you're not lying. It's been that. But um, lots to talk about in the sports world. Wanted to get this in before I got to go to that other place that I work at. And, uh, yeah, garden teams approaching the playoffs. We want to hit on some of that. Mm-hmm. I want to hit on why you cannot mess with Mr. Curtis Jackson. If he got beef with you, you better just leave the country. Possibly see if you could look for another planet. There's rumors about Antarctica. I don't know. He is the ultimate troll. Oh, my. He's my, I, he's my, my, he's my hero, man. <laughs> bro, he's grown on me. He's grown on me, me because I'm not going to lie. Like, when he first emerged... Yeah. Um, when I mean first emerged, I mean in the mainstream because I already knew who yeah. he was yeah. prior to, um, you know, get rich or die trying. Yeah. But I didn't see him as as really an artist to take to all that serious early on when he was doing the mixtapes. Mm-hmm. When when he did uh, Ghetto Quran, which I you know that really got him into yeah quite an issue. But um, yeah, man, it's like every morning that I go on IG. It's like he is on this nonstop mission to get Puff Daddy. And uh, with good reason, we'll elaborate on some of that. Mm-hmm. But uh, big day yesterday in the sports world. Yeah. In a day that wouldn't feel like it was going to be a big day. There was a lot going down. You yeah. know, the 60 and the 61, definitely are two numbers that are on my brain as I wake up this morning. You know, we got the New York Jets striking mm-hmm. a deal with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles to acquire a giant killer. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to leave the conference in the form of Hassan Reddick. And uh, we're going to start it up with uh, the hockey here. I do want to hit on this. This is a generalized question to my Ranger fans out there. Rangers in playoff mode already. Peter Laviolette, when taking this job, it was a point of emphasis with him. <laughs> that he wanted his Rangers in playoff mode basically from the first day of October. The way that they approach finishing games, the way that they approach a loss, the game after, how you react. Um, There's a little bit of controversy because one of our more popular players is uh, on a bit of a reduction. You know, uh, one of the uh, ascending goons in the NHL, giving me the Ty Domi vibes. (laughs) But, um, you know, that... The win against the Avs, beating the Bruins, beating Carolina, you know, these are quality, quality hockey teams that the Rangers just keep arriving for. They came out flat against Philly. It looked like they were going to get beat. They found a way to win that thing late. (laughs) And, um, you know, I've voiced my opinion so many times about my fear of the president's trophy. I don't want the best record. I get, like, kind of the eerie vibe about it. Boston Bruins, you know. So yeah. many, so many great ones. The, the Lightning, before they had their three consecutive trips to the Stanley Cup Finals, winning two of them, they had the best record and died out early. It's been a, an ever-growing theme yeah. in the NHL. But um, I'm not going to worry about that. This is a different year. This Rangers team looks like previous failures have kind of mended them. They, I think uh, – from a free agency level and from the trade level, they have the depth to do this. I mean, even in the event that we lose our main goalie, Jonathan Quick, mm-hmm. arguably <laughs> the best backup in all of hockey. I uh, I like what I'm seeing. I just want the playoffs to start already, and I want to get back a couple of injured players, hopefully. You know what? I, <clears throat> with the Rangers, I, I – I'm so great. We ran the Islanders a couple of weeks ago. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And we did it in dramatic fashion. I was like, yeah, they thought they had this. But nah, we got them. And um, what we're seeing with the Rangers, we're seeing finishing power. You know, because in the previous years, we looked good. Like, okay, we're going to do it. But it came down to the playoffs. Like, what happened? But us clinching so soon and having that finishing power. Yeah, with the Phillies. I'm Phillies. I'm thinking about the Phillies. Uh, with the Flyers, the same same 
same ones. That was it. One is where Caddy Stripe outfits. One doesn't. But with the Flyers, <clears throat> I see it as a hiccup. I mean, it was just a hiccup. But yeah, and we still and we still won the game. It's just that it didn't feel like the typical Ranger victory. Finish it. We didn't have that. It's like we didn't have that finish. Yeah, they got a point out of it. You know. Um, <clears throat> oh, look who's here. Uh oh, that's him. Oh, look at him. Yeah, We're gonna get on this guy. Welcome, Mister Mike Zappy, super duper Texas Ranger fan. Yeah, uh, yeah. Our winning streak <laughs> continues, and the Astros <laughs> now have a four-game losing streak. So, heck yeah. We're gonna talk about those Yankees, though. <laughs> oh, I think with, <laughs> I think with the with the the other Rangers, the ones that play on ice, we have to see what we do when it's time to play for the Stanley Cup. That's 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 what, that's what we're playing for. It yeah, I, anything short year. of a Eastern Conference yeah. championship and an appearance yeah. in the Stanley Cup Finals to me would be a bit of a yeah. fail because we've seen other teams that might have an off year and then ascend, like like the yeah. like the Florida Panthers. The Panthers, yep. You know, the yeah, Bruins have a track record where they can talk. And and, and our, our tri-state rivals, mm-hmm. the uh, New Jersey Devils, as much as I can't stand that team, with them. they have the resume to talk all that ish. Mm-hmm. Because in the 90s, after our, our Lone Cup, they had a bit of a mini dynasty in their own right. And yeah. the Devils, um, you know, our other tri-state got, you know, the New York Islanders. Yeah. Granted, I, I had baby teeth when they were doing it. But the point is, yeah. Islanders won four in a row and a row. quite possibly could have won five in a row. Yeah. Chris yeah, Dixon. What's up, Chris? What's up, Wait, Chris? So, so you guys are not just playing for the President's Cup and um, a first-round exit? Not this year, sir. <laughs> this no, Rangers we're trying, team we're, we're trying to go is a going for the Dallas Cowboys. On whoever yeah. the West wants to bring, whether it's the Stars, the Avs, or the Canucks, I personally want the Canucks just yeah. because it would kind of be cool to, uh, you know, thirty years in the making. But truth be told, I just want to win the damn thing. It's been so just long. Win it. My win father. It. This is a cool little story. And uh, man, if he was still alive, I would have to beef with him about this. You know he. Can't take me out of school for that. Right. He was on the <laughs> Rangers float. I don't know how he got on there. I think he just kind of did a last second volunteer mission on it. Now, this is the era when things were a little more lax. Yeah. You know, he, he yeah. was on um, a float with Alexei Kovalov as well as Glenn Healy, who was the backup goalie for the 94 Rangers. Yeah. And uh, unbeknownst to me, I found out that Alexei Kovalov was a collector of many a treasure trove. I don't know if he collected them for how many goals or if it was just some kind of, I guess you could say, some kind of superstition thing. Yeah. But let's just say uh, Alexei was getting down with his favorite Russian vodka and uh, Pops was doing a little indulging, you know, while, you know, kind of picking the brain of uh, one of the best scorers of his favorite hockey team. But, man, I'm like, damn, Pop. You couldn't take me out of school for that? He's like, oh, don't worry. We're going to win next year. I'm like, 30 years later, it has not right. happened. You know the thing about it? And that's – I've seen all, all the teams I rooted for, the Giants, you know, the Yankees, the uh, of course, the Rangers and the Knicks. I've seen each of them win two championships except for the Rangers because, you know, the other one was before my time. Yes. And I would like to see them win another one. And see, back then when we won it back in the 90s, I just really followed – Hockey. I wasn't like, I wasn't a big fan. An argument could be made. Football. An argument could be made that our '93 mm. New York Ranger team mm. may have been better than the '94 squad that won the cup. We lost yeah. in the second round that season to the Pittsburgh Penguins, led by Yarmar Yager and yeah. the phenomenal Mario Lemieux, mm. as they ended up going back to back. And then the Rangers Mario. did win in '93, and then you had the Devils in '90. Five and then the Colorado Avalanche in '96, formerly mm-hmm. the Quebec Nordiques. Right, I forgot about that. Shouts out yeah. Jeff Elder, but yeah, my very actually my very first hockey game, <laughs> or at least for the Rangers, was um, against the Nordiques. That was the '93 squad, so that's taking yeah. it back. But yeah. um, this is the most complete feeling I've had as a Ranger fan, and thinking that they could really finish it probably since '93, where. I legit thought they had it in the 94. It came to fruition after some very tense moments because, you know, the Canucks just wouldn't go away. Yeah. Rangers had a 3-1 lead, and it still forced the game seven because similar to our New York Yankees, similar to our New York Knicks, the New York Rangers don't like to do anything the easy way. No. 
that's just been part of the journey of being a fan of theirs. But um, I am excited about the NHL playoffs, and uh, yeah. I just want to <laughs> see what these guys could bring. And while we speak on that, got to speak in this as well, looking ahead to the NBA playoffs. Um, I'm going to start with our team, the New York Knicks, and then we're going to pass it around with other teams that are pursuing uh, playoff greatness. Tough loss yesterday against a very young Spurs team still working on an identity. But one thing that is not up for debate is the greatness of Wemby. 40 and 20, just a phenomenal performance. He hit a dagger three late in the game that really, yeah. you know, put us in a way that we're I'm like, damn, we, we're going to drop this one. Yeah. Um, but Jalen Brunson, one point shy of the New York Knicks single game record for a points in a game uh, right wow. behind Carmelo Anthony. Yes. Uh, it just got to that point in the fourth as well as OT where I just was like, man, however we this goes down, just keep letting Jalen take every him. shot possibly. And if we lose, we lose. You know, um, mm -hmm. no shame in losing a late season game to a young athletic team that is only going to get better. The Spurs have a nice little future in front of them as they continue to cultivate talent there. As the Knicks go, um, I actually dropped in on uh, – Nickabaka Avenue last night, Steve Azul, you know, doing his thing there. And uh, I chimed in on the comments. Is that his face too? He's everywhere, bro. He got the Knicks, the Rangers. Oh, I didn't know uh, Nickabaka Avenue was his. Okay. I I, I just kind of – I think Nick, <laughs> Nickabaka Avenue might be his boy. I, I don't know the okay. whole back, back story because it was – you know, but I kind of just flew in mm -hmm. and was chiming in on the comments. And uh, mm -hmm. it was funny because the way that Steve was spitting, like what he felt about the Knicks – he was basically verbalizing everything that was in my brain, you know, <laughs> starting with Mitchell Robinson being an offensive liability. Yeah. You know, uh, the importance of Jalen Brunson goes without saying on how he was and is arguably the greatest free agent acquisition this team has ever had. I mean, you got to go back a ways to say what free agent move would trump this. And personally, I think he's already trumped previous great home runs for free agents or, or trades, whether it be a Larry Johnson in the 90s, whether it be a Marcus Canby well, who had a phenomenal 99. Yes, Allen Houston would be definitely the free agency <laughs> one, but some people view Houston as overpaid, even though... Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I love Allen Houston, don't get me wrong, yeah. but Allen Houston will never mean more to the Knicks in my eyes than John Starks did and that's yeah. the guy he essentially replaced after playing together for one year. So uh Houston was more Houston was more about scoring to where Brunson he does so much a the total game. package man he could facilitate if he's having yeah. an off night shooting the rock yeah phenomenal free throw shooter great leader great court vision great yeah. basketball acumen yeah and it's cool to see his dad on the bench you know what right. uh, a guy who never had even um an inch of the career his son did, mm -hmm. but a guy that was always well respected in the locker rooms of those Knicks teams. Yeah. And and you know when you constantly make a roster in the '90s, even if you're not playing or late mm -hmm. early 2000s, you're doing something right because it's yeah. not easy to stay in the league, and that's something that gets overlooked it's just a lot. Right here, it's this right here, that brain. Absolutely, you know? it's. I mean, it's also <laughs> worth the noting in regards. I mean, well, first let me just say that. I am amazed at how many Knicks fans and Yankees fans, I guess, are here right now. I was doing some Uber last night, and I was driving a lot of people back and forth from the Frost Bank Center. And, you know, I learned that I met a group of Knicks fans that were celebrating Julius Day, and they gave me the backstory to why mm -hmm. why uh, they're in San Antonio for Julius Day. And I was like, man, this is pretty cool. And, then, and not to mention, you know, we're talking about 61 by Jalen and 40 with Wemby, but – the the fans that were present at the game got to win his two career highs last night yeah. by a player on each team. So I thought just if you were present there, like what an incredible game to be at, you know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that's why I don't feel bad about the loss and you know, low yeah. key getting over overlooked by the pro phenomenal performance of Ju of uh, Jalen Brunson. <laughs> you know, it's not every day somebody drops sixty plus. Dante DeVincenzo. He was Single on. season three point record for the New York Knicks, mm -hmm. breaking Evan Fournier's record, which was not done that long ago. Right. 
John Starks <laughs> held that down for quite some time. Boy, almost 20 years, yeah. Yeah, man. So um, that's a cool thing. Um, you know, you want to win a game like that because it gets remembered better. But the God's honest truth is right now they're at the three, which I'm very pleased with because I said it on a previous show with you, Zappy. We have to, at all costs, avoid playing the Boston Celtics in the second round mm -hmm. because it means more miles on them. There's always that chance for somebody knocking them down. Upset form. We've seen it in the Eastern Conference recently. And, um, you know, if, if the season were to end today, it's a matchup that I told you, Zappy, that I wasn't necessarily excited about, which would be taking on the Indiana Pacers. Mm -hmm. If I yeah. had my choice, I would rather have Orlando drop into that sixth spot or mm -hmm. Cleveland jump up into the six. Yeah. Because I'm not keen on that matchup. I still think the Knicks will win the series, but I don't think it'll be as comfortable as if we ran into Cleveland for a second consecutive year or if we played the Orlando Magic. And by no means am I going to say stay here and say that the Magic would be an easy matchup, but I'm just looking ahead a little. And yeah. I see a second round that looks like Knicks and Bucks and Celtics and Magic. That's my personal opinion. Um, Miami Heat. Miami Heat, uh, you know, they're kind of doing it again. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a weird yeah. team. Very inconsistent, but, that, but man, that's, that's... I do not want to see those guys, even yeah. though I do want to see those guys. Because, you know, that, that Heat run, that Heat, Nick yeah. rivalry runs deep. Very deep. Going back to the 90s with Pat Riley and oh my. Jeff Van Gundy and Van Gundy grabbing uh, what's the name's leg. Yeah, Alonzo Mourning and, and you know, oh, Zoe and Brown Charles body Orwell. slamming. Probably, <laughs> oh, my God. I, 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 and the thing is, the good old days. We're talking about a, a good era in Knicks and Rangers hockey, which is kind of reemerging right now. Exactly. Which yeah. gives you the nostalgia. But you can, at, during that era, watching yeah. the Knicks play, there was a possibility that there might be more fights in the Knicks game than there were in the Ranger game. And that's saying something. <laughs> yeah, for real. That was I, the era uh, right there. My thing, um, speak on this Heat uh, Blazers game. Your second 60 point defeat, man. How do you lose two games by – this is not college basketball. You're not Kutztown State going against UConn. And this ain't Lawrence High School playing in Chaminade either. Right. On the receiving right. end of one of those beatdowns. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's I not looked that, like Van yeah. Gundy trying to guard their big Asian center. That kid was, like, towering. And that was definitely another Yao Ming, man. Oh, um, you You can't get beat by 60 points two times in one season, man. I mean, I know – I know – um. I know the Blazers are not that good. I'm not even going to say not that good. They're not horrible. that good. They're, they're horrible. But ugh, come on, man. You can't lose. By we get a nutritionist. And me, you, Zappy, Brett, and Shed take them on? Yeah. I, I think might. we can pull an upset. Well, I think we'll come within 10 points. Yeah. Or I might come close to a heart attack. But either way. um hey, <laughs> long as we look good. <laughs> long as we look good. Even if it means dying. Shouts out Apollo Creed. Just playing. All right. Um, the character, not the man. I love you, Carl Weathers. Right, right, don't, right. don't get that confused. Because <laughs> some people like be like, that's, that's really his name, Apollo Creed. Yeah, yeah, you said that. Cancel his ass. I was talking about the character, not the man. Yeah. But no. Um, <laughs> Miami, because of Spolster, that playoff pedigree runs deep. And yeah. it, they're always a team that you have to account for. Like, okay, for instance couple of years move forward when the San Antonio Spurs start getting some more talent around Wemby. That's going to be the team of the West that you talk about because yeah. of who, who runs that organization. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? The same agree. thing goes for Steve Kerr. Any year that his Warriors are in the playoffs, yeah. regardless of whether this is the end or if it's just a step back before they figure out a way to keep it going, yeah, always got to be accounted for. You know, the Denver Nuggets, they got slapped around yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it took a little bit of a beating. Yeah. So maybe the Wolves are like, hey, not so fast. We actually are here, guys. We're not just some sexy, you know, regular season team. We're coming to do some damage in the playoffs. And that's the thing. The West is so wide open. It's hard to forecast. It's so deep, man. And, you know, the Nuggets lost two, two in a row. The West is deep. You know, the Timberwolves and the Thunder. I didn't think the Thunder would be this good this quick. No. No, you know, not at all. I mean, God, at least – 
Man, I'm, um, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm in such a good mood, man. There's, there's so much yeah. going on right now. Yeah, it, it's the West is going to be something else. Um, I, I I still got Denver coming out of it. Um, I just think with the with Timberwolves, I think they're just young, still exciting and everything. But just like with Sacramento last year, just with like with Memphis, I just think that inexperience and that excited excitement from being there because they're who they are and young. I think that'll be their downfall. I think they're a year away. I think Denver with that veteran pedigree experience, championship experience and everything else, I think they'll pull through. Yeah, barring a minor miracle, I still see it as yeah. Nuggets and Celtics. Of course, I hope my Knicks, um, you know, have a say in that. And it'd be fun to play Zappy's Warriors. That'd be a lot of fun. Zappy, what are your thoughts, man? You, who's coming out of the West right now? Or is it just still too early to forecast? Uh, I think, I mean, the West still goes through Denver. This is the defending champs. They're mm. right there. I mean, yeah, they're right behind the uh, Timberwolves and the, the OKC Thunder. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, this team has championship pedigree while the other teams are young. If there's a team I'm going <laughs> to, if I'm a Nuggets fan, and if there's a team I'm actually keeping an eye on, it's not the Thunder. I mean, it's not Sacramento. It's Dallas. They're mm -hmm. they're hot right now. They're they're now out of the play and in the, the final six. They're this Dallas is a team to watch out for. They're they seem to be getting their groove going now. And you know, you always gotta take into consideration the Lakers and the Suns. Uh, I mean, they're the, the Lakers, even though it's a Mickey Mouse championship, they've won a championship together. And the Suns, as much of an up and down season as they've had. They still have guys on there that can get the job done. So I, I look at it as there's guys that could defend or that can contend against the Nuggets, but really it's the Nugget show. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone says. I like OKC. I like Minnesota, but just they're too young right now. And I think they're yeah. about a year away from actually contending for a championship. But you know, it's I've been wrong before, and I mean we all have. And mm -hmm. if <laughs> OKC or Minnesota or something like that does go on a run and make it uh, represent the West in the NBA finals, then, Hey, congratulations to them. But I just got to leave my, if I'm a, I'm a betting man, I'm going to put all my money in on Denver. But you know something, you guys, Solid. Um, Solid you guys, it's funny because if you look at the Suns, you know, you look at the Lakers, they had, and you look, even look at the Clippers, they have these, these built teams, these let's join together teams. But if you look at the Timberwolves, the Thunder and the Nuggets, they got, guys they've drafted a few few agents but they don't have a team full of superstars but those are the three teams on top and yeah, you gotta wonder what um kd is thinking he is with the suns he has two superstars with him but you got the okc thunder up there number two and they built from the ground up just like they did when they drafted kd harden and westbrook same way they built from the ground up and, and that's one of those trios that you're just like damn man I mean, granted, there was a reunited situation with Harden and uh, KD in Brooklyn that didn't have the same effect by any means. But, um, you know, we, we've we've spoke about this on many a show when talking about legacies of how KD <laughs> loses to the Warriors in seven hard-fought games, then he joins them, just didn't give people the right feel. And as much as we like to get on LeBron, and sometimes with good reason, mm -hmm. I think the one thing that we could all agree on is that when LeBron was set jumping, he was making sure that every set he jumped to won a championship mm -hmm. to kind of yeah. maybe undo his credibility of dipping out on his first team. Like Shaquille O'Neal, similar mm -hmm. career trajectory, how he left his first team without a ring, mm -hmm. but won with two different organizations after that. In LeBron's case, he did two other organizations as well as going back to the team that originally drafted him. So no matter how we like LeBron or dislike him or view him on the court, one thing that we cannot dispute is that the reason why he will always be invited to the table is because he always has one where he's gone. Maybe not as much as he should have, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, still collecting four championship rings, no small task. And then, of course, you got Steph Curry. You got Tim Duncan. These are dudes that, like, are sprinkled along the, along the likes of a Kobe, an MJ, a Magic, a Bird, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the other golden arrow. And you want to go back to Russell – yeah. Kuzi era Celtics yeah. basketball. That's that they, you know, that was phenomenal winning that they were able to do. Um, before we move it along to mm -hmm. little NFL talk and definitely some baseball talk, I want to hit on this 
nice little segue for some humor. And quite frankly, this shit ain't that funny. 50 Cent and the mission of squashing Diddy. Why Curtis Jackson is not the one to beef with. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like almost every day there is a new accusation. There's a new creepy yeah. video of <laughs> one Sean P. Diddy Combs. Mm -hmm. I still want to hear what J-Lo has to say. That's the one I'm waiting for. But um, it's cringeworthy to say the least. And, you know, we're going to find out for sure how this plays out. And, you know, money talks and money has often got many a celebrity out of the mud in these kind of situations. But I think mm -hmm. the thing that is really scary for Diddy and his mm -hmm. team of lawyers is that while he has made some settlements with certain accusers, mm -hmm. it appears that it's at a level right now where his money don't mean as much as it used to. And the industry yeah, and the sponsorships are all doing the walk away from him. I think with him um, and with money, money can get you out of a lot of things. But when it comes to stuff like sex, tra uh, human trafficking, like sex or anything, it's hard to get out of that. It's real hard to get out of that. Some people have, but most don't. And I think with him, I think um, his track record with dealing with people in the past and how if you look at his the carnage he left, you know, Kim Porter, Craig Mack, Biggie, Heavy D, Andre Harrell, Albie Shaw, Christopher Williams, Faith Evans. You look at Chris all Stout on the violence Chris level. Stout. Chris Stout, right. Yeah. You look at that, you know, and you say, wow. And everyone, even with Mace High, everyone said, this is what he done. And you got the Meek Mill thing, got all this. Then you look at the videos to see how him and Jay-Z and all this. And I, and I still say they're going to get Jay-Z next. It's just so much shit. And like I said, when it comes and with this with this climate with human sex trafficking right now, that money may not get and him disappearing. Now I have an interesting take on this. Mm -hmm. Mark Curry. Yeah, Mark Curry, another one. Yeah. Who who collaborated with him on Bad Boys for Life, which is mm -hmm. one of their most iconic songs as a label, mm -hmm. especially post Biggie. What's interesting here is that. I, I had a long drive home yesterday, so I listened to this podcast that he appeared on and just the whole scope of it. And he said, listen, this isn't about me saying that Diddy didn't do me wrong. And this isn't me saying anything. He he, he kind of inferred on the level of can you essentially be a sex, tra a sex trafficker if you are a John? Like even with the whole mule thing, mule is a powerful word with the young fellow that they scooped up in that regard. And, and listen, while I'm not saying that some of this shit ain't true, and while I'm not saying that maybe it's not all true, mm -hmm. I want, I want, I know the kind of person that that Sean Combs is. Yeah. But having said that, I still want this to be fact based because you know as well yeah, as definitely, anyone definitely. with this media that they're gonna sensationalize every headline for the sake of selling and selling and selling, and then when you, like I said, on IG and on, and on his handles. 50 Cent has a vested interest in this as well because, you know, his baby's mother, who is, is the mother of his son, Sire, yeah, is actually, um, they're going to take it to court apparently because 50 mm -hmm. wants sole custody of their son. Mm -hmm. I think it's a double-edged heat that he has because Puff Daddy did have a moment of cup of coffee with her or whatever have you. But also yeah. there are rumors Mm -hmm. that she was a sex slave or, or some yeah. kind of girl that was working. But what I find interesting, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I've heard so many different things, is that the lawsuit that she had towards Diddy, I believe, has been pulled back. You don't pull back a lawsuit unless there's some truth to that shit. Right, exactly. You know, and, and uh, 50 is <laughs> I mean, just on this fucking mallet squash those little ants campaign. So I haven't seen someone get ran over this hard since Ja Rule and Irv Gotti. I'm sorry, Zappy. Go ahead. I'm getting fired up. No, no. It's just <laughs> I, I think this whole thing is interesting, especially now that we all... It's pretty much confirmed what we all knew that P. Diddy is a snitch. Oh, no now question. That, that the reports are coming out this morning that he was uh, working with the FBI as an informant this whole time. And what was that rate then? Was that a rate Hollywood just for them to go destroy evidence mr salam i know that we don't like to talk ill of the dead here but you said this just the other day who else was a snitch 
his, his father. Papa. I told you. <laughs> See, yeah. Richie Zappy, this is what I've been saying on Facebook. <laughs> I grew up not like he's from Harlem. He's born in Harlem, raised in Yonkers, or whatever his father's. Yeah, I think he was in Mount Vernon, yeah. Mount Vernon. I mean, Mount Vernon, yeah. Mount Vernon from where <laughs> I stay. Trains, you know how the trains runs in New York. You know how the train stop. A few train stop, five train stops is nothing. You know that Queens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how far he from, from me. You talking ten, maybe fifteen minutes at the most, depending on the rush hour, whatever. You taking the bus gonna take longer, or you driving. But yeah, and I kept saying, I said his father got killed. I heard he was a snitch up in Yonk. I keep saying Yonkers, up in Mount Vernon. I kept hearing that. I kept hearing that. But his father was just some, doing some grimy shit. And I said it. And I've been telling people that you're just a hater. I grew up, me and Diddy are not too far apart in age. I remember all this stuff. You even grow up as a kid. And that's for Diddy. And I don't mean to throw dirt on him. But from jump, everyone going back to the freaking city college. I said, he's always been this way. And when The city college thing was really reckless. Yes, it was reckless. And he's always been that type of guy. And this coming out by him working for the FBI, it don't surprise me. It don't, and I'm not, and I'm just, this is just my opinion. Maybe none of this stuff is true, but I knew this stuff 20 years ago. <laughs> the thing that, the thing that was funny with uh, the Mark Curry interview or the, what, yeah. what I was listening to yesterday in the truck going home is that he, he was like, maybe for personal use with the drugs. He's like, but at Diddy's level, I'm not completely co-signing that this dude needed to be a drug dealer, so no. to speak. So when no. they say the word mule, I'm thinking about that Clint Eastwood flick where he's like running for the for for the for the Mexican cartel. I'm like, slow yep. down. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that, but because if because if that dude was a mule and Diddy's still free, something ain't lining up. Something ain't lining up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But at it's the same time, thinking. yeah, right. It's also known <laughs> that the timing of the way that they do things is always very interesting because it makes you feel that they are waiting for just the right pileage, so to speak, because it can be an avalanche down. Because when you get a big fish, so to speak, and no, by no means mm -hmm. do I believe that Sean Combs is a big fish in the grander scheme of this kind of stuff. I don't either. But Mark Curry made a good point. Yeah. He was like, not to take the sensitivity away of sex trafficking or any of that kind of life, but he was like, yo, if the girls are going on their own accord, is that really sex trafficking? And while the, while the legal term and verbiage would be yes, there were more layers to it. And by no means am I trying to make excuses for deplorable right. behavior. But but one thing right. I will say is like, it's just, it, it's so much coming out. It, it's like, even with the yeah. Kevin Hart thing, like Kevin Hart was shooting something with Diddy and he kept like reiterating, I don't want to get uh, anywhere near the bed and I want the bed in the background. And this coming yeah. from little five foot three or whatever, Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah. He's a big five foot three. It's crazy, man. And, and I don't, I mean, I don't want to keep harking on it, but, um, yeah, I don't. I don't think he's a big fish, but I think he's someone. Uh, he's one of those, and this is this is why I've always had an issue. And people say, "Oh, you just hate because you don't make that type of money." It ain't got nothing to do with money. I make. I'm I'm doing pretty good here. I'm not great, but I'm doing pretty good here. It's like, it, like guys like Jay Z and Diddy, they're like the gatekeepers. You know, you got look how Jay Z did. Um, Damon Dash or Damon Dash, another one. Yeah, yeah. Damon Dash, DMX. You can go down the line with those people. He basically shitted on them. DMX I mean, there's people that suspect that that there's something a little murky with even Aaliyah, because oh, we all know murky? that it's we all know <laughs> we all know that um, Beyonce mm -hmm. and her star prowess mm -hmm. in a lot of metrics maybe doesn't come to fruition at the level that it did if an Aaliyah was still there. Because I'll be honest with you, I've always everybody has a preference of of, of what kind of style. And mm -hmm. what kind of vibe, and and you know, yes, the looks as well. But truthfully, Aaliyah mm -hmm. was was literally going no up. pun in, pun intended. One in a million. Yeah, Aaliyah, <laughs> and Aaliyah was going up. One in a million. Make no up. make no mistake about that. Last thing I want to say on this fifty cent thing is just like, well, I don't agree with always like plotting and praying for the downfall of others as men there is always that slight pettiness within all of us oh yeah that 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 we do have that because i mean shit we've shown it in the not so distant past as a as a collective unit 
I know Zappy and I have spoken off air that something, make it on air that we've had some chuckles on about certain downfalls of, of people that we just don't see in a very good light. But um, no, I'm not talking about you, Josh Donaldson. Um, Could be 18 hands. But um, no, it, it's crazy, man. Like, like he's the king of petty. Like, like, like this is the dude that, that buys up floor seats at Ja Rule's concert because that nobody to make sure nobody's going to be petty. That was, that was so the pettiest petty. of the petty. Even his he character right up in the middle. was petty. <laughs> he dies and comes back. He's like, I ain't done. Because yeah, I've never really been a big fan of 50. I liked him, but like you said, I wasn't a huge fan. But the pet, because I'm petty. You know how I am. The thing that, that rubbed me the wrong way with him yeah. in his younger years mm -hmm. was when he did the Ghetto Quran song, oh. I kind of viewed it that he was kind of dry snitching be because I didn't know all the end, the ins and the outs of his beef with the Supreme Team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously the leader. But as I've gotten older, I realized that mm. it wasn't like dry snitching, so to speak, as the way that I would have perceived it. But, man, the way he was talking reckless on that, I was like, my God, this guy's going to yeah. get, you know, or even um, how to rob when, when he did that song. And basically his introductory to – the hip hop game was like, I'm gonna diss every important R and B and hi and hip hop star. I meant black, and, and I'm just black gonna run back right. street. Oh my! <laughs> he rubbed pump without a gun, took his piece and run. Weigh 700 pounds. How's he gonna catch me, son? All yeah, right. My, my my last word on it is with all this stuff going, even the Diddy and Fifty and everything. The one thing I found is. You have to be to yourself when you're in the rap game because if you look at Pete things when they're making songs, they are they actually are dry stitching on each other. Yes. So you just got to be. And then you like, have the other man. layer of it where some of it is fantasy because you know Fat Joe who doesn't have to really uh, you know over excel and explain his yeah. street credibility has admitted yeah. time and time again that they do have a sense of uh, a sense of exaggerating mm -hmm. in certain instances. But the bottom line is, is that um, your 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 previous point, stay to yourself yeah. to a level. You look You're at right. certain guys that are always able to be in this industry and always be relevant. The Rock Kims, Most cool Def, LL Cool, cool J, Jeff, yeah, yeah, guy, guys on Wu Tang. Yeah, just be to yourself. Absolutely, uh, man. And speaking of Wu Tang, Method Man is a big fan of these guys. New York Jets taking off. Acquire Reddick for a third round pick that could be upgraded to a second. I think half of you will take a Jets fan because so is uh, um, I think Ghost likes them too. Ghost, yeah, I was trying to say Ghost. I was saying Wu came out. Um, I was saying Raekwon meant Ghost, yeah, because I know, we, I yeah, because Me Method Man was actually um, at the Jet facility during that hard knocks thing, yeah, you know, as well as uh, our man that played Ray Donovan, he was all in the mix, and and I didn't know that uh. He had ties like that that he was so interested in football either, but that was kind of cool. But this could be the you know this is their second stanza, their second opportunity to do something special. They pick up pass rusher Hassan Reddick, <clears throat> and I'm happy to see him leave the division because this Me man too. has just tortured the New York Giants, New Jersey product. Um, and you know well, Howie Roseman stink, and what's next? Go ahead, Zach. No, I was going to say, I, I think it's, I find it an incredibly interesting move for that mm -hmm. the Eagles in the offseason go out and acquire the Jets star pass rusher. Yeah. <laughs> and then they turn around and trade Hassan Reddick. So actually, I mean, they got younger. They and, did get younger. You know, and Reddick, he's still going to be a force. And now coming to the AFC East, that's a, that's a big move. He's now the best pass rusher in that division. And that's not even really debatable. I'm and glad it's to see not. him gone. And yeah, I, I am glad too. <laughs> but, you know, for they, what a big move because the, the New York Jets, clearly they are going. Last year we thought was them going all in. They are definitely all in this year. And mm -hmm. they have a they have a competent back, backup this time, Tyrod Taylor, where yes. th this team can – now they have the solution where yeah. last year they didn't have a backup quarterback. Correct. If, if Rodgers goes down this time, Tyra could easily get you enough wins to get you into the playoffs to hold mm -hmm. you over for a uh, healthy A-Rod to come back in. So, Buddy, if the, if the Tyra defense. Taylor – oh, they definitely have the defense. If Tyra mm -hmm. Taylor 
was able to win football games with that piss poor offense that the Giants put out every Sunday. Mm-hmm. He could do a lot of things with the New York Jets because you have Mike Williams opposite right. of Garrett Wilson now. And uh, yeah, and then there's no, there's not to mention while they He's have the number ten, number ten pick, they we cannot rule out them going after a Roma Dunze. If he's sitting there at ten for this team, you know, give give mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers another weapon, give him a quality, another a guy that's going to be a number one receiver in the NFL. There's so, a few ways they can go with this because yeah. you can go the receiver route, you can go the tight end route, and get a Brock Bowers to really complete mm-hmm. that offense. And they can go get their future tackle to sit behind Tyron Smith for a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's I correct as well. Yeah. You know, you you have choices. You know, Joe Alt might be on the board at 10. There is that possibility they could get Fashonu. There are guys that they can get. Latham's out there. You know, th- there are guys that they can get to fill that that hole that they need because, mm-hmm. you know, Tyrod's also not a spring chicken. So you don't want Tyrod or A-Rod taking mm-hmm. those kind of hits, you know, in Tyrod's case north of 30 and A-Rod's place, uh, case right on the cusp of 40. But I think I think with the Jets, um, unlike with the Giants, they won't be asking that much from Tyrod because you got Brees Holmes back there and Brees Hall back there, and you got the receivers. To where with the Giants, he just had Saquon. I mean, he had Slayton, but that O line. I mean, they got to show up the O line to it in New York, also the Jets. But he I mean, had a nice thing with Waller, even though Waller had a year to forget. If there was one person on that offense that I feel that he clicked with the best in terms of passing the ball and catching the ball. It was Darren Waller, who I yeah. still hasn't announced if he's going to retire. I, uh, at this point, just go, bro. Like, go like I don't want anybody playing on my team that's not all the way in. Yeah, just go. Yeah, just go. that's the best way to explain it. Um, I, I it, you know, I just can't. That, and, and, you know, sh- once again, not all the way in. Shouts out Josh Donaldson yet again. August 21st. <laughs> never forget. Hey, yeah, you know, I, if, if, if something happens tonight, I'm going to send a shout out to you, Richie. I mean, we're going to the Yankee game because my sons want to see Aaron Judge. They want to see Juan. Nice, so, nice. Well, so are we are we segue segue into baseball right now? We certainly are. Oh okay. yeah. Well, I got. <laughs> I mean, I have a a crazy 36 hours coming up. We're driving, like I said, driving to Houston, and then waking oh, up early to get back tomorrow to go to the the USFL opening game for the San Antonio Brahmas mm. versus DC Defenders, and then. After hey, that, we're, we're going to the we're going to the Warriors I mean, game. <laughs> let me ask you a question. I don't mean to interrupt you. So I know the USFL played at one place. The XFL played. So are they playing in different stadiums this year? Do you know? No. So the, the way the what the UFL what is what happened is they took the four best teams from the USFL and the four mm-hmm. team four best teams from the XFL. Okay. So all those teams kept their team names. And okay. they all they did is they created the new league. They're still playing in their same stadium. So like okay. the Brahm, okay. the San Antonio Brahmas are still playing here at um, yeah, at, at the Alamo. Alamo at the Alamo Dome. Yeah. The uh, the Arlington Renegades still play at the Rangers old stadium. So it's okay. you know they all still have their their same stuff. It's just a brand new league. You know this is right. okay. this is what looks to be the the minor league to football. NFL. You know so. Yeah. But yeah, and then and after that, I've got to we got to get to the Warriors Spurs game tomorrow night. So we've got ourselves a fun. That's a cool. That's a cool little um, trifecta of of, of our quartet of games there. That's really cool. Um, Gonna start with my Yankees, and I'm gonna let Zappy finish with his Rangers. The Yankees get huge morale boost in 24 (laughs) by beating arch nemesis Houston again. no Garrett Cole, as you know, he's probably not going to be pitching until June-ish, if at all. I yeah. think June, he will make a return. I just hope he's able to stay healthy. Nestor Cortez, game one, not the best stuff, but enough to gut it out yeah. and give his yeah. offense a chance. But what really has me more excited, besides the fact that Oswaldo Cabrera has been on fire coming out of the gates. I had four hits last night. Good job yeah, there. four hits, go-ahead home run game one. Uh, we know what's Get that out of the plate. Soto. Yes, out the plate. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we know what Juan Soto's bringing offensively and defensively. Aaron yeah. Judge, slow start, nothing new. That's normal for him. Uh, big G, big blast, but it was late. It was um, already when the Yankees took the momentum. So I'm not going to take too much out of Big G's 
solo shot, but Carlos Rodon dancing through the raindrops of trouble yesterday and really a statement performance for a guy who needed needed that man a character defining start after so much scrutiny from the fan base and rightfully so i mean he got shelled in the bronx he's over here blowing kisses at fans yeah you know flipping the bird you know you know not a good year one but yesterday what he did and and we said it off air we said it on air they need him to be that guy in Cole's yes. absence if they're going to be a playoff team versus a team that is just above the water. Right. And he, he showed out yesterday, man. Yeah, he Against did. I was team. proud of him. Yeah, because, I, I mean, even going into the season, you no, know, we had Houston right out the gate. I said, we we might start one and three or whatever. I said, I don't know. But And when I was watching the game, I said, damn, we're down 4 nothing already. But you know First what's game. exciting, guys? Since the third inning of game one, the season yeah. opener, the New York Yankees have given up one run. One run. The ball. And that's what I mean, because I was watching it. I was like, here we go. And, and this was a point of contention that we were worried about. Like, is this pen going to be able to hold? I yeah, like the, the low-key moves right now. Yeah, I'm watching the game. I'm like, okay. And I'm watching it. I said, oh, here we go. I said, watch that. I said, yeah. Juan Soto. <laughs> that was beautiful. Was like, and Trevino <laughs> on, on the receiving end of that. Yeah. Um, because I got news for you. If that was Gary Sanchez and he would have done the Ole, I would have oh broke my, my television. Yeah, and then to come back and win what seven? I think one seven one. Yeah, like yeah, that was a huge inning. That was a huge inning, and 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 you know for the second consecutive day, mm-hmm. it was Juan Soto who you could really point to and say that that was the at bat of the comeback. Because granted, yeah. we already had the bases juiced, only mm-hmm. one out. Yeah. But the thing was, is like Soto, similar to a Ken Griffey Jr. Or a Barry Bonds in the box yeah. gets strikes fear into the opponent's pitching, where it's like you almost would concede the, the go ahead run instead mm-hmm. of him hurting you worse. And right now, I mean, this is how I see it Aaron Judge is the captain, he's the face of the Yankees. This reminds me to a level, and it's super early to make this assimilation mm-hmm. Judge, captain, Jeter, captain, A Rod, all time great, joining. All time yeah. great captain. Because right. listen, I love Aaron Judge and he's my favorite Yankee currently. But I do believe that from a talent based standpoint, Juan Soto does have more than Aaron Judge. He but together, more. they are phenomenal. Yeah, he offers more. Mm-hmm. But I think Zappy want to talk about them Texas Rangers too, but they had a good a good thing going on too. So we'll yeah, yeah. I mean, I like their colors. They remind <laughs> me of my Rangers. I like those colors. Zappy, you're on the floor, kid. Is he there? I don't know. Zappy, yeah. you awake? Zappy, yeah, can, you, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now that you're speaking, yes. No, no, I was talking this whole time. Uh, oh, okay. No, I was going to say, with it, I mean, there's really not much on the home front for Texas. We, <laughs> we're we still in first place, and we yeah. are the only undefeated team in the division. We do have game two today against the Cubbies. Uh, get to see Kyle Hendricks versus uh, Cody Bradford. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. Good pitching matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just I'm going to look for similar things. How how do they bounce back after their, after their first game? All the adversity they were felt. Um, Ooh, I mean, yeah. that top of the ninth inning with that bad call by the umpire for yeah. to go to a Travis Jankowski game tying home run for to a yeah. redemption moment for Jonah Heim. So I mean, yeah. it's a uh, it's <laughs> definitely fun. Um, you know, I, I expect nothing less than I want to see this Rangers bats keep going. I want to see. I mean, the amount of respect that Wyatt Langford's already getting in this very first Major League Baseball game. I want to see how... You shouted him out, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to see how they pitch to him because, you know, if, if we're watching your ace. <laughs> we're watching top-tier <laughs> pitching already walk a rookie in his yeah. very first baseball game. I mean, that's that's a huge, that's huge, huge... So, that's I mean, huge. <laughs> I, I'm excited about the Rangers. Don't get me wrong. Um, bright, season's bright. You know, like I said, we... Yeah. As of right now, we're going to have to rely on dependable hitting and good pitching from our bullpen. The bullpen checked that box off in game uh, game one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously once the – we're supposed to get Max Scherzer back by May 15th, it looks like, and then but DeGrom and Tyler Maley won't be back until August 1st. Yeah. So, you know, Texas just has to keep doing their thing, keep the bats swinging, and, you know, get some good 
reliable bullpen pitching and not blow 33 saves like they did last year, I think they'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of saves, yeah. Yeah, yeah that it, first it was, game, man. That, that ninth inning, that first game, I was like, whoa, that's the way yeah, it's the season. It was, <laughs> you know, I, I, I probably would have been the first baseball fan to break a TV opening night. <laughs> like, I was. He still but, got that World Series intensity that, like, bled into the new season. Dude, yeah, Zappy, well, the, the, the thing about it is that I, I was checking it out. And I'll say to myself, Zappy probably losing his damn mind right now. Yeah. Don't, don't ever let me and Zappy go to a Buffalo game. Like, especially oh, yeah. if, because even if it's not our team playing, because obviously only one of our teams will be playing if we want to see Buffalo play. Yeah, you're right. I can see us pulling, like, going full on Jason Kelsey and, like, embracing, like, the Buffalo experience. You're going to see Zappy, like, power bombing some 160 pound dude through a table. Yeah, you know, oh, dude, that, that, yeah, that's sold. I'm in. You know, might so be Brett. To, Brett might be the guy he power bombs. We, we was at just... work watching it, and um, <laughs> a lot of the we got a Rangers fan at our job, and we were looking at him. And I, I thought, I said, man, you remind me, you remind me of this guy named Zappy. He said, "Why well, said right now he's probably in San Antonio flipping." He said, "Why well, said he's a diehard?" Yeah, he's fan. a diehard, he said, and he was like, "Damn it!" I mean, he was just flipping. I was like, "He's oh, legitimately God. the first <laughs> diehard Texas Rangers fan that I could actually say I've met." I mean. You know, you have people from all over the world that come to yeah. Orlando. So, like, I've met Ranger fans. Yeah. But from a personal level, he's the first one that I could say, wow, man, that guy's an actual diehard Ranger fan. Like, I have never yeah. met one prior to Zappy. I only know two, Zappy and the guy at work. Because he, he's from um, he's from San Antonio. Like the yeah. Brewers. I never knew no damn Brewers fans until oh, John Olsen. And that's a real Brewers fan. Yeah. yeah no he kidding. really gets depressed with them. So that's real. Yeah. That that ninth inning was something else, man. Shout out John Olson. Um, <laughs> Brewers getting into the first semi scuffle with the New York Mets. I, I want to hit on this for a moment before I go to start bench cut. <laughs> Jeff McNeil is such a whiny little bitch, man. <laughs> hey, I mean, <laughs> he is. He did go a little over, far over the there top. when, yeah, when his spikes when out. His, yeah, yeah like, oh, top. God, bro. What is displeasure of that slide? But for him to have <laughs> taken it to that level, a little, a little over the top. and uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to call this game a meaningless, meaningless game. They all count, but God, yeah, it's but the Philly it, roots because you know where you know he came from. Yeah. You know, it's because of the Philly rivalry, his first game yeah. as a Milwaukee Brewer. But I'm like, bro. Stop yeah, being a little whiny bitch. Even over the yeah, top, that's, that over that's the top. a little too much for me. <laughs> and then, but then I was reminded that, mm -hmm. um, you know, generations do change, and we have to remember what generation is now really taking over baseball or sports in general. So we're going to see a lot of antennas. In that no, moment, that was, whew, in that, that moment, was right there. In that, yeah, in that moment, <laughs> I was like. Manny Machado, did you just become my best friend? No, I mean, and I don't like Machado it. at all. And I couldn't I, stand Chase Utley, but like, I'm like, bro, that would stop it. I would have, it. I would have, if, if we would have seen a situation where a Ruffman Odor punching Bautista or, <laughs> or our man, I mean, uh, Jay Ramirez, knocking yeah, out, yeah, uh, Jose Ramirez knocking out Tim Anderson. I mean, yeah. Then that would have Once been a again, different thing, but I'm like, Donaldson. but yeah. we're, we're we're sitting here watching this guy complain, and I'm like, dude, do something about it. Then do don't just about, sit right. there when, and bitch about it, you know? When, like when Ramirez put Tim Anderson on his ass, somewhere Josh Donaldson was looking in the mirror, talking to himself in the third person, and celebrating that moment. Josh Donaldson is the living depiction of Jack Parkman minus the talents. <laughs> Oh, damn. <laughs> that, that leads us to start bench cut. Best New York sports oh. team editions. We've got OG Ananobi, Brian Burns, Juan Soto. It is a very early thing to put B Burns and Soto into the mix because of the fact that Burns has not played for the Giants yet, and Soto's only two games into his Yankee career. OG has missed some time, but he has been very impactful for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Start bench cut. I'm going to give you guys 90 seconds each, starting with you, Idris. Mm -hmm. Ananobi, Burns, Soto, get it. 
I'm gonna start Burns, Ben Soto. I hate the cut, OG. Um, I'm starting Burns because I know his impact. Mm-hmm. And him coupled with, with um Dexy and Thibodeau, you got Thibodeau and Burns are almost like the same type of player. You got a guy who just I mean just just crazy fast, strong, agile. And I think with our type of defense, mm-hmm. he fits right in there. Um Juan Soto. I'm I'm benching him because of his position. Mm-hmm. Um, he can do a lot with the bat. He can do mm-hmm. a lot, you know, out there on off. I mean, uh, on uh, defense. I mean, with the bat on offense and on the defense with the pitch. I mean, with uh, being out there in the field. Um, but I think his play dictates what someone else does. Mm-hmm. Being, you know, when he's not at bat, mm-hmm. to where Burns, what happens? He dictates what's going to happen. If you don't do this. You, you you impact the game. I hear that part because you got number five. Burns' mm-hmm. presence essentially makes him yeah. the second best yeah, pass rusher on the team, but a guy who could have a career year because of Burns' presence. So I get that part right. too. With OG, and I said I hate to cut OG, but you got to cut somebody. Um, I'm only cutting him because I ain't got no choice, man. <laughs> That's the best I can say because OG OG brings the Knicks up. I mean, they've only lost like. Four games a season while he's on the mm-hmm. court. Mm-hmm. I mean, that says a whole lot, man. Yeah, I just need him to be healthy along with Julius. And see, that's that's another reason the health thing. But I can't believe Mitchell Robinson made it back before Julius. That's shocking. Yeah, and that is shocking. Healthy with, with OG, he has to stay healthy, man. When he's healthy, Indeed. he's a beast. When he's when he's hurt, it hurts us. All right. So for the last call on this, you have Brian Burns starting. You have Juan Soto benched, and you have mm-hmm. OG as your cut. Yeah. All right, Mr. Zappi, 90 seconds or more. We got three minutes left, so you got enough time. Uh, have at it. All right. Um, I like it, Idris. I do. I really do. Um, I'm actually gonna going to cut Brian Burns for the sheer fact mm-hmm. that we haven't seen him play a down yet with New York. Um, yeah. If we're talking about from a t- talent standpoint, then no, he would not be the one to get cut. But – you know, I think the Brian Burns effect is going to have a greater effect next season. Of course, it's going to have impact this year, but I, I mean, the Giants still have too many question marks where I think it'll have that big of an impact to be the difference between making the playoffs or not making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, I'm going to cut Brian Burns. Mm-hmm. Again, this is not based on the the talent level or anything like that. It's not based on right. what they've done in the past. It's just based on we haven't seen it yet. I'm going to bench... OG, um, because we see how important he is to that New York line, uh, New York Knicks lineup. Um, like we just said it best, this team has not lost much when he's on the court. So he's definitely a key piece to that team's uh, success moving forward <laughs> with eight games left in the in the season. And I mean, healthy or not, when he's out there, he has had an impact on the Knicks team. I'm going to start Soto. Uh, because between the three, he's the best athlete. Soto is arguably the best baseball player of this time. But the reason why I'm starting Soto is because of the impact he brings to that lineup where now, in years past, it was just Aaron Judge and teams could work around him. But now they don't have that luxury because you're either going to have to face Soto or you're going to have to face Judge. But no matter what, you're going to have to face him. 20 and second mark. Sorry. I got Zappi. you. I, no, I got cut you. you like that. And um, Soto, his, his arm that, in the that, outfield. 20 seconds. <laughs> that, no, I was just saying Soto and his arm in the outfield. Zappy, stop talking. <laughs> Juan Soto is my starter. Brian Burns is my bench. OG Ananobi is my cut. Mm. These boys get a tie for two reasons. <laughs> I agree with Zappy on the starter. I agree with Idris on the cut. Until next time, I am Richie. For Mike Zappi, for Idris Salam. Have a great day, everyone. Good job today, guys. This was a fun show. It's because of his arm at right field.